other different paintings I showed my co-workers and their feedback on Palmer Hayden and his paintings. What I'm hoping for is that you come up with your own interpretations and meanings of Palmer Hayden's paintings, as well as how they make you feel and what you think the image was supposed to portray. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. So first, I would like to share a bit about my analyzation process. Before this class, I was a fan of art and I have visited many museums like I enjoy too. But now because of my analyzation process, every day when my coworkers and I are at work, I like to point out art pieces that I've often overlooked and now we have discussions about them. And these are some of the discussions that we've had over the paintings I showed them that Palmer painted. Well, I'm not quite sure. I see more monkeyish features, which I don't feel black people or Africans, because this looks like from Africa, would really have those like deep features like that. Um, and then the little coconut breasts. Well, they're not coconut; they're cones. Um, I don't know. It's kind of disfigured, like um, Caucasians would look at. African people to me. I don't like it, but art is art. I don't like it, and his perception, if I knew a little bit more about him, maybe I could understand why he would have something like this in his collection. I think, well, from looking at it, I wouldn't say that whoever painted it was like making a painting of something that they like saw themselves in. It looks like it's kind of making a character of what they think of a, uh, of a group that they don't identify with because it doesn't really seem like it's trying to like sh like show a culture aspect. It just kind of seems like somebody looking at another group of people and, and their ideas of it. to having a watermelon race. The, um, I guess it's not that. I, I, this is, looks like a southern thing to me, too. You know, you have a watermelon race, you have a speed, uh, I mean, a, um, a seed spit contest, you know, to see who can spit the seed the farthest. You have that kind of stuff, so that's not so bad. It's just, I don't know. I just think his people are more ape-looking than anything, yeah. and so it that's why. But the colorings in his photos, and the, I love trees, so that grabs my attention right away. Um, the sceneries are, are really nice. I mean, I, I kind of like the like the scenery. I don't necessarily like the, the way that the features of the people are depicted. I mean, it kind of, to me, it seems like they're trying to get like a derogatory. I think everything outside of like the features of the, the people you know, it's decent. And I kind of like the scene. It just kind of seems like... I guess I would, like, analyze it from a point of view that like the situation may be depressing in the sense where it seems very crowded. Um, it kind of reminds me of my upbringing a little bit though. I lived in a project where the housing was kind of like real crammed in uh, with a lot of people in a small concentrated area. Um, and we used to kind of congregate like this, like outside in the courtyards and in the general areas. But, you know, it was always like beautiful, good times. We made the best out of that situation, even though all but the janitor who paints is kind of cool to me because it shows 
um, another side to the janitor, a creative side. Um, I wonder if he's painting the woman and the child. Mm. You know, that looks like President Lincoln in the background. Shows you how we used to have like presidents on our wall and white Jesuses on our wall and that kind of thing. But I was wondering what he was writing. And still, those features, the, the lips that stand out, the foreheads that stand out, you know. But I don't know. And his hands, his hands are big, powerful hands. But yet he's probably doing something really delicate. And I, f I also feel like the f I can't really see the features of the woman too much mm -hmm. or the baby, but it does look like the features of the male in the picture is kind of characterized again, like just how big his eyes is and kind of got a dopey look to him a little bit. Uh, I can see what looks like a picture of Abraham Lincoln in the back. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's like the whole white savior complex of, you know, black folks having these images of who they would consider to be, you know, our liberators, our saviors, or, you know, folks who civilized us type of thing. I mean, hang, hanging a picture of someone in your house is like, is, is, like paying reverence to them, you know what I mean? So for a black family to have a picture, you know, of somebody like Abraham Lincoln, I think it's problematic on many different levels. I, I can see. It's just to me, he toned down the facial negativity that I think a lot of them, a lot of, white people put those images in. You know, when I look at minstrel shows on TV um, from way back then, they, you know, they had the big white lips and all that kind of stuff and walk around and, and the, so this makes it like more connecting for a person of color or a black person, African American anyway. So overall... Well, the difference is there's not a picture of Abraham Lincoln in this one. It's a, it's a look into the past to me, um, if we can get past some of the feature things that are not comfortable for a lot of us to look at, because we think that it's things being uh, mocked or somewhere, you know, people laughing at different things about African Americans, African people, so. I think art generally is easier for people to consume and accept. You know, being that like black folks in the black community, we don't really have much of a voice in like mainstream media or in literature. Um, I feel like you know art was an important way for us to communicate our worldview um, and like the lens that we look through. Um, I'll also say though that void of having other platforms like media, radio, television, to kind of like explain some of these things, I think is also a little problematic too, because you're going to easily misinterpret something just by looking at it. You know, But I do think it was necessary and it was what we had at the time. Um, Would you say that you are an appreciator of black art? I wasn't until I started to read. The more I started to read and like learn about the circumstances surrounding our communities and um, our, our our heritage, the more I started to appreciate black art. Because uh, again, it was more than just what you could visually see. But it, you know, I started to understand the um, the creative part of it. I started to understand some of the more contextual, conceptual things behind it versus just the aesthetically how it looked. I think that was the disconnect for me with art at first, but the more I learned about the things we went through and how we overcame those things and despite our circumstances, how we constantly contributed to the world, the more I started to appreciate the art. To the average person, the janitor who paints might be offensive. But after some reading and after some analyzation, I've come to realize that the janitor's head
wasn't meant to be a negative African-American stereotype, but it was depicted after tribal African masks in a region of West Africa. And that's the thing with art. It can mean so many things and it can be taken so many ways. The vividness, the dullness, everything about Palmer Hayden and his paintings that I showed to me represent the plus, the plus and the negative of the Harlem Renaissance. There was room for everyone, just like in art, there is room for everyone. I would like to add that someone like Palmer, T Palmer Hayden, an artist like him, I would love to see in 2019. I feel like society would really go either way with it, and that would be something that I would love to witness, the reception. Thank you so much for watching.